Welcome back to Podcast Recovery, is everyone. Is it Podcast Recovery, though? It is Podcast Recovery. That's the network, but what is the show called? The show is our new segment that we are uh, going with for what's the tonight. Name? I is... just came up with it. Thanks for sharing. Yes. There was a there was another option for the title of the show. What was the other option? Keep coming back. Yeah, that's... No. But we just talked to someone who has that podcast name. Yeah. It's a no good. And I hate... When I finish a share, and someone's like, "Keep coming back, keep coming, back. keep coming back," you know, because I kind of just want to be like, "Hey, fuck you, buddy. Why yeah. don't you keep coming back?" It, it's a backhanded compliment. A- apparently, like in certain places, like uh, retail or service places, like the employees there have uh, sayings for people they don't like. And I read about this. One of them in Disney World is like, "Have a magical day." If somebody says if if somebody at Disney World ever tells you to have a magical day, they're really telling you to fuck off, huh? Because you've been kind of a dick. You know what mine was when I worked at record stores? What? It'd be like track seven. Say like I mean, it changed my life. Have you heard track seven? You turn. You haven't heard the new Ashley Simpson? That is such. Oh, it changed my fucking life. That is a turdish thing. At 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 my restaurant, if somebody's have if somebody's being a real dick when they're on their way out the door, I'm like, have a blessed day. Bless your heart, dude. I I hit him. Bless my heart. Bless your heart. God bless him. Bless your heart. So anyway, the uh, I believe the uh, goal and. uh, avenue that this new segment is going to take is allow our, our listeners to get a, a little bit uh, more of a sneak peek into their uh, hosts. Yeah. See see what makes us tick. Have a little uh, um, Q&A about uh, what's going on in our daily lives. Like a just for today. Just for us. Like where we're at. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of just it's, a, it's also a place for us to share what's going on. Yeah. And yeah, to let people into because, I mean, yeah, we, we usually have a platform for other people to share their stories. We always hear stories. Mm-hmm. And then you have Q&As, which is usually about those stories. But what's the nuance? Yeah. Lives are more fluid. You know? Lives are more fluid. So hopefully, I believe what Eric's uh, shooting for is every time we get into a recording session, we will do one of these 15 to 30 minute, hi, how are you? What's really going on? Would you like to go first, David? Would you like to talk about your feelings? I know. Would I like? I do like to talk about my feelings. I know I, you have to get to Shadowland. But. I, yes. And for any of you listening, Shadowland is a laser tag place where a whole bunch of our friends are meeting up to have a good time before our friend Christina sh- celebrates her very first year of recovery. So that's that's pretty cool. Does she celebrate at the midnight? She is celebrating at the midnight. Ah. So it will be a late night for me. Which I haven't had in a while. I mean, I generally go to bed around like one anyway, so I'll be all right. I'll be asleep around 11. You're a turd. Um, I'm old, dude. Okay, David's feelings. Hmm. Or just where you're at, man. You don't even have to be in your feelings right now. Yeah. I'm I'm not particularly in my feelings. Um... I feel I'm at, um, hmm, sort of like a, uh, not necessarily a fork in the road, or, uh, I'll just stick with that analogy, not necessarily like a fork in the road where I'm, like, having to choose between, like, this avenue or that avenue, but... I just have a feeling that, like, something's change is is coming in my life for, like, me and my wife. Like, there's definitely some things uh, I know need to happen. Um, She's on the verge of getting a new job, finally, which has been a pain in the ass. I'm at the end of my rope with my job, um, and I'm... I, 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 I've just capped out. Like, there's no... I've hit the ceiling at my job. There's no more up. There is no vertical movement from here. Um, like, I could potentially squeeze a little bit more money out of them. And it, it sucks because 
I was in this spot several months ago where I like actually like last year where I was just absolutely fucking done with it. And then I, it just got to a point where like it wasn't right to switch jobs at that time. And then my wife lost her full time job. So I sort of had to be like the breadwinner and I got a promotion all at the same time at that job all the way to GM. So I'm the GM. I'm the fucking guy who's running the show. And I didn't want to stay, but this job has treated me pretty fucking well for the last five years. And um, I felt like an obligation to stay. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Which I know is going to stagnate my progress. Um, Because it... it was just a weighing station, and I believe, like, this career choice or just job choice for the last seven fucking years. Um, it's the restaurant industry, for anybody who's listening. Um, I just think it's a dead end for me, because any, anything above that just involves, like, twice as much hours for negligible pay increase. Like, the restaurant industry really sucks. Unless you're the point zero five percent that gets famous on TV, you're gonna have a shit life. Like even if you're like you're owning a restaurant or general managing a restaurant, you're working anywhere from sixty to hundred hours a fucking a week. You don't have holidays. You don't get birthdays. Like you don't get weekends. All birthdays. Like you know what I mean. Like any sort of special occasion that happens in your life, it's like oh. Cool, good for you. Fuck you, you're working. Mm. It doesn't it doesn't matter. Like we have 2 days off a year and I just had those with Thanksgiving and Christmas and then that's it. It's pretty much you're fucking working until those 2 days. And they happen within a month of each other and then it's just shitty work. Um and so I like I'm uh, I'm talking with my one friend who's been trying to get me at his job for a while. Um, as an avenue in and, uh, just sort of, I don't know, not, not feeling like I owe it to anybody because honestly, like I've really thought about it. Like if I fucking, I'm replaceable at that fucking job, they'll find somebody. But like at the time when the previous general manager quit, if I had quit at the same time, they would have been in deep shit and I would have felt really bad. Um... For doing that. So I feel like I've I've done my diligence of like, hey, I'm stabilizing things. I've been able to hire some good, solid people the last couple months and get them in there and get the ball rolling towards like, okay, bye. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that that's, that's where I'm at. And that, I just feel like something... It's like reading a book and sensing that the end of the chapter is coming. Yeah. And, like, that's where I'm at. And, like, I'm ready to start a new chapter and have a longer-lasting prospect towards house and kids and all that shit. Yeah, so that's where I'm at. But otherwise, like, recovery-wise, I'm pretty good. Um, I still do not have a home group. I honestly haven't been looking for a home group. I've been reading a lot more. Um, some self-help stuff, some just like pure poetry. Um, been doing a lot more meditating on my own. And like just staying in contact with people in recovery. But as far as like being a service to Narcotics Anonymous, I'm sort of like, eh. I've done a cut like people have asked me to go chair some meetings recently and I've I've gone ahead and done that. Yeah. So I'm still like doing that and I'm obviously here at Podcast Recovery, um, working on my recovery that way and trying to be um a service to other people. Um but yeah, recovery's good and I've noticed how how much my like recovery has changed and how it's like not it's just not as dire as it used to be you know 
I just don't feel like there's a lot of people who are just so headstrong. And I was that way for a long time, like about just like book thumping and program thumping. And I'm just not that way anymore. And I've, I've re- I, podcast recovery has had a lot to do with that. And just allowing me to be where I'm at. And when people are like, oh, you need to get a home group. I'm like, no, you need to mind your own business. Period. It's not your fucking recovery. Like my my grand sponsor had a 10 year gap in his recovery. He has 22 years. And between like year seven and year 17, he didn't really go to meetings because life showed up. He was raising a kid like his career took off, like his wife's career took off and he was living his life to the best of his ability. Mm-hmm. And I think that's recovery. And then once things started to slow down a little bit and he felt the need to like uh, re reintroduce himself back into recovery and really plug back into the, the network, he did that. And that was his journey. And that's perfectly fine. Like sometimes when life gets busy, we need to balance recovery with reality. Like, mm. I don't believe in hiding out in meetings. Um, so, yeah, I make it to one, maybe two a week. And stay in contact with my sponsor and, and do step work. I mean, that's what I do. And, and just practice these principles on a daily basis. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. What about you, buddy? Where are you at? Hmm. Hmm. I'll call you out. Hmm. I'll do it. What? Because we just talked about it on a different podcast? Yeah. yeah. You, you, you were talking about your anxiety. <sighs> now, is, yes. it beca- is it because of, like, isolation? No, no, no. Anxiety isn't that. Um, one thing that, that does irritate me, I read a lot of recovery literature, and this is not... Uh, this isn't, I mean, I guess this is partially it, is it's almost a de like, it's kind of like a defect to be an introvert in recovery. Um, but, you know, I mean, I have depression and mm-hmm. anxiety. So I guess I think uh, clinically I was diagnosed with social anxiety and like general anxiety disorders, but... I don't know. The anxiety is more worrisome. Being sad, at least in this this early of depression, mm-hmm. um, my moods are fluctuating heavy. Mm-hmm. Uh, watched The Mandalorian this week. Very happy. Yeah. Great show. Don't mm-hmm. know if you've seen it yet. No. Wonderful. No spoilers. No. Fucking awesome. Really? Made me very... Is this is a show? Yes. Okay. Very enthusiastic about the direction star wars is going when they have certain people working on projects Mm -hmm. fucking great show um but i was like happy watching that i was happy watching other things but then like during the day sometimes it's just like i think i stared at my couch for an hour today jesus no sound just stared at my couch. See, I can't really have no sound like that because I have tinnitus. So the ringing in my ears takes over and it gets unbearable. So silence uh, silence doesn't really exist to me. I usually don't like silence. Mm-hmm. So to do that, it's kind of like, you know, the anxiety anxiety's bad right now. Mm-hmm. Um, the anxiety is usually not great. Mm-hmm. But usually I don't deal, like, I can deal with it. Yeah. Where now it's more just, like, getting an email stresses me out. Mm-hmm. Like, fucking doing something will stress me out sometimes. Mm-hmm. I haven't felt some of this stuff in a long time. Mm-hmm. So it's just kind of annoying, you know? Yeah. Um, and is it a psycho? like, is it? Something where I should see a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Maybe. Maybe. It's at least like a warning flag, I would think. It is. Yeah. It is. Um, certain things with, like, the depression's worrisome. Because if I go deep into that, it gets bad. Oh, yeah. Um, but the anxiety is, like, this is the worst anxiety I've had. 
Mm-hmm. Like, I have not had anxiety this bad, even when it was before. Like, this is, like, some really bad anxiety. Um, or maybe it was that bad, but it's been, like, five to seven years, so I just don't really remember. So... Is it, like, stress-induced? No. Hmm. hmm. But I do have a shit ton of stress, too. Yeah. And like, but I've been, like, managing that pretty well. Like, But sometimes... Like, it's kind of like a balloon. Like, when you squeeze it in one spot, it's it's going to blow up one side or the other. So, if you, like, you it might think It doesn't have you're... a reason, though. Like, I, I mean, I'm pretty good at, like, recognizing some of that stuff. Yeah. And, like, some of the anxiety, like, has, like, uh, you know, a catalyst. But the other part doesn't. Mm-hmm. It's just, like, there. Yeah. The depression is kind of worrisome, though. That is a little bit worrisome. I've also had like something, not to like cut you off because I do no, want. Go ahead. I do want to go in further. Like, I don't know if it's necessarily like anxiety, but it's just been um a distance I feel I've felt from fucking people recently, and like trying to keep it very uh, nonpartisan, like. Just with everything that's fucking happening in the world, socially... Uh, you're talking about politics. No, I'm not talking about just politics. I'm talking about, like, globally, like... Are you not woke? Am I not woke? No, I don't think fucking seven billion people are fucking woke. Like, that's what, like, is so disconcerting to me, like... I, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll just fucking flat out. I do not see hope for this fucking society. I don't. I do mm. not. I do not see a way forward for the fucking human race. I, I, I think I, we're fine. I do not. I do not at all. I like. I genuinely see like all the problems with the natural world and human society, and I just see the unsustainability of pretty much everything that humans do and it infuriates me like so like opposite of like an anger i fu- or, or, of an anxiety i find myself just getting fucking furious and uh. just like the human race i'm just like this place is fucked up and like it's 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 kind of it it's to a point where it's like an anger based oppression where it's just like I have seen 32 years of this bullshit fucking Earth, and if it's like asteroid comes and wipes us out, I'm like, cool, whatever. Well, that's, that's a step three thing, David. I'm just like, fuck this. I, at, like, at 32 years old, I'm like, fuck. Do I have to do another 32 years of this bullshit? Like, fuck these people. They all are all assholes. That's step three. I mean, it is, but like, I'm totally content with it. Like what? I like I like if I die tomorrow, I'll be like, okay, that's fine. Yeah, I'm okay with it. Like I really have a, like, I don't. And if like I we got the news that like oh my god an asteroid's gonna come destroy the Earth in ten days, I'll be like, fucking tits. There's a rom com movie about that. Really? Yeah, with uh, I think it's Kira Knightley and Steve Carell, maybe. Really. Yeah. Cool. I think. I think those are the actors. Kira Knightley, I believe, is one of the actresses. What's the name of the movie? Oh, I can't fucking remember. It's really going to bother me. Keep talking. Google it. Keep, well, I'll do that. You keep talking. But it's just like all this fucking shit, and it, and it just seems like everybody's just so fucking fine with everything. Like, and I'm not like pointing at you, but like you're just like, oh, I'm fine with it. Like A lot of people are just like so oblivious to shit and like so wasteful and shitty and... And everything that's going on politically, I'm like, why is everybody so fucking mean to each other? Like, everybody on Earth, we all fucking hate each other, and I don't understand it. And then I, like, come into, like, a recovery field, and so many of us have, like... Seeking a friend for the end of the world. Oh, yeah. Nice. Okay. But, like... Then on the other hand, I have this... So I have this, like, duplicity of... 
Like, fuck all this shit. This is all shitty and it sucks. And then in recovery and like, and just generally with people in the world, I'm like, I generally want what's best for you. I don't hate anybody. Like any, any thing that's going on socially, like we're supposed to hate this group of people or that group of people and we're going to go bomb them and they're going to bomb us and then it's going to be huh. World War Three and all this shit. I'm like, I don't want any fucking part of it because I, I'm just like so sick of fucking wars and bombs and killings and everything. I'm just so fucking sick of it that I'm just like, when the fuck are we going to evolve as a fucking species that like, can we just play together nicely with our toys? Do you remember the South Park episode about religion? Uh, what is it? The uh, I think it was about the Wii. And um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And fuck they yes. got rid of religion, but like they were really upset about like what the atheists what the atheists are gonna call themselves. themselves? Yes. yes, and that's fuck what yeah, they, they the talking about. otters. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, fuck yeah. I mean, of course it'd be talking otters, but... And, like, I get it. Like, oh, there's always going to be conflict in the world and you're living in a pipe dream. And it's like, am I? Like, I, I, I am, yes. But, like, it's also... It's, it's just a higher peaceful mindset where I'm just like, I don't fucking... I don't see the fucking point in it anymore. And, yeah. I was, and I've, like... Society or life? No, 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 no. Just, like, people fucking... Just, like, war in general. I just don't see the fucking point in it. It doesn't make sense to me anymore. And people are just fucking fighting each other, and there's so much indifference in the world, and like, oh, like, this, these people hate black people, and these people hate gay people, and these people hate trans people, and these people are reverse racist on white people, and it's just like, why are you all so fucking hateful to each other? I'm like, I don't give a fuck if you're any of those things. Yeah. And then there's, like, different religions fighting, and I think both of us can agree, like, I don't give a fuck, like what color you are, who the who you choose to fuck, what what god you pray to. I don't care. I don't care about any of that. Yeah. Um, so I don't know how do these people have time in their lives to just like continuously just like hate on these people. It's exhausting. Um. Kind of going, to, like thinking about the you know, I always find it interesting when. And maybe it's just my life experiences, but how people can judge someone on not their individual acumen. Yeah. Um, Because, like, I don't look at people as far as, like, I'm like, okay, so if I was going to hire someone for a job, I'm I'm, I'm looking at the person who does the best job. Yes. Um, I'm not really, I I just don't get it, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know, like... But that's just me, and other people have different life experiences, and, like, I know people with different life experiences, and I, don't, I can't really relate, you know? like. But eventually their, like, paradigm just falls on its face because it doesn't make sense. Like, because they don't even understand the rationality of their hatred. That's true. And I, I don't like hatred. No, and it's um, just, like, a whole bunch of, like, false doctrines and misconceptions and misinformation that are fueling these fucking angry-ass people all over the world. And I'm just like, Fuck. Stop. Like, and, and it sucks because, like, I feel myself, like, having, like, these days where I'm just, like, angry as fuck. And I'm like, I don't want to have an angry day. But, like, it, like, once I've gone down that rabbit hole far enough, I'm just like, nope, here so we you're go. Letting, you're letting the... Here we go. You're fuck letting it. the outside world affect your... Emotional state. That's interesting. Very much. I know, I know a lot of people who are like, I'm not going to have kids because I don't want to bring kids into a world... Yeah. Like this. And I'm like, and like part of my fascinating. And part of my brain says that. Part of my brain is like, do you really want to bring a kid into this? Again, though, going back to the third step, that's all external things you have no control over. Yeah. And I understand that. But, I mean, internalizing what the third step is mm-hmm. as your favorite step. Yeah. Like, that's a great practice of that step. Yeah. Like, ultimately, like, it doesn't ruin my day. And, like, I do get through it because... I do realize that, like, I have zero control over this stuff, but, um, I mean, it, 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 it's still an awareness factor of just general human existence, and it's just, like, I'm being exhausted by human existence, and it's just this stupid shit we choose to do. Yeah. No control, man. No control. 
I understand that, but like. So, I mean, but you're letting it rent real estate in your head. It's something you literally could not control. Like, there's nothing you can do to change that. Like, I mean, there is. You could, like, try to ascend to a level where you make decisions in this, you know, stratosphere. That would, like. But I'm saying, like, but there I also is like, a path, I but. also see, like, that is just, that is, frankly, impossible. Nothing is impossible. Okay. No. It's let's let, let, Let's talk possibilities here. Improbable. You and I. No, it is a it is a absolute impossibility for either you or I to become a leader of this country, like president. It is impossible. I, but why would you want to be a president? I'm just saying it is not a possibility. Um, sure. I mean, it's improbable. It's not impossible. No, it's impossible. There is there is literally like you would have a better shot than me. And that's, I think we can both agree on that. That's 100% true. 100% true. I wasn't going to say it. I'm happy you said it. Oh, yes. yeah. I'm not fucking stupid. Like, I could create a roadmap which would make it more likely. Yes, but still not possible. Improbable. Because you, dude, you still have too many like things in, like, you have too many, like, character issues that they would just burn, burn down. Oh, no, yeah. But it's a popularity contest. Exactly. It comes down to marketing. Exactly. At this point. Yeah. <laughs> Now, I, I think I would probably be more of a marketable personality than you. Maybe. Depends on the persona I would decide to adopt. But Jesus. You are a fucking... You, maybe you should run for politics, motherfucker. <laughs> which persona I would adopt. Which... Who I would pander to. And which lobbyists I would back pocket. It's a game. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking the game we have created sucks. It's and very it's similar in like any like corporate atmosphere. There's there's a lot of like political, a lot of ins and outs, yeah. a lot of what have yous. I get it, but yeah, like this shit has been fucking like. So the this is all affecting you on a daily basis. Not on a daily basis, but it's like yeah, yeah it, it, it it circles around and like every few days, and. Um, basically the way I, like I've, um, fought against it is abstaining from social media because then it's fucking everywhere and then it just reminds you. But like, I also like to see some good, some good shit. I like to see people's funny memes and what's going on in their lives and whose babies are doing what. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. But then you keep scrolling too, too far and it's like... You can mute people, you know that, right? Oh, I've dude, I've heard so many people in the last like month and a half just because I'm like, fuck you, don't need this shit anymore, and um, and that stuff I can control. I can control what I can see and what is uh being previewed to me, but um, cool, yeah, and like that. So there, there's there's been a great deal of anger recently. I've had a lot of anger. I understand. Yeah. I'm and actually going to look into anger management. See, no, my anger management has been fine because, uh, like, I haven't... There hasn't been any, like, explosion. So, be, and also because I've, I've done those things, like, um, reading and meditating, and, and so, the, like, those are the things that, like, pull me back in, like, into the now and be like, okay, this is, like... Everything here is fine. Yeah. It's just everything around me I don't like. <laughs> and it's like, it, it gets to the point where, like, I just don't want to fuck with people. And it's like, I don't want to fucking talk to you. You're fucking gross. Mm -hmm. I see what you fucking do. I see that shit you believe and what you say. So why the fuck am I going to talk to you? And then, like, and, and, and a lot of that's dealing with personalities and fucking in recovery. Because I've seen some of this shit that the like people in recovery say, and like then I see them in a meeting, and I'm like, I don't want to fucking talk to you. Why would I talk to you? Uh, I know what you're talking about with that sort of shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, dude, you just went on this crazy hateful rant on your Facebook, and now like you want to like talk about like, oh, 
it, it's it's unconditional love and and everything like this, and it's just like you're full of shit. You are full of shit. It can be difficult for people to practice what they preach. Yeah. So ultimately, like, um, and the way like I practice what I preach is like I still want what's best for that person. Like whatever makes them happy. I don't wish them to be fucking ripped apart by wolverines or anything like that. Um, Are so, you talking about the animal or the Marvel character? Use your imagination, buddy. I actually imagined a lot of little tiny wolverines ripping apart a person. That's what that I did, too. That was the better imagery? That was me, too. Yeah. Um, so, like, and I, I don't want them to relapse. I don't want them to use. I don't want them to overdose. I want their recovery to continue and progress. But on the on the realistic side, I don't interact with them. I don't talk to them. Like our fa- our social media is now not linked anymore because I don't want to be a- associated with that person. Ultimately, like in my heart, I wish them well, but I'm also like I don't need to put myself in that situation. I understand. So and building healthy boundaries. Yeah. I don't know. So it's just testing my nerves recently with shit. Very good. Yeah, that's all I got. Well, what, what, what about David? you, David? Uh, well, are you gonna ask me fucking questions? No, we're over thirty minutes. Um, oh, perfect. So, from everyone, you know, I would like to be the first to say thanks for sharing. Oh God, that that was <sighs> so. Was lame. that condescending? That was so lame. <laughs> Is that the most cons- condescending that... way to say thanks for sharing? Yes, you uh, made eye contact with me and I everything, did. David. I want to say, no. I want to say from everyone, no. from the bottom of our hearts, thank oh, you God. for sharing. See, it's not or, what it's not what you're saying; it's how you're saying. Thanks it. for sharing, David. No, you're just you're, wait, you're, wait, wait, wait for it. You're, you're missing it. Wait for it. You're missing it. Keep coming back. Oh, oh yeah, there's the hit. There's the hit. Anybody who's listening, this may be the last time you hear me on podcast recovery. I, I doubt that. I doubt that. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we're we're good here. So, All right, uh, yeah. everybody, thanks for uh, listening uh, to my rant for the day and Eric's uh, Eric's two minutes. Eric's two minutes. Yeah. It was mostly about me, and I apologize for that. Um, it's okay. You need to you need to get it off, right? I mean, like you no. needed to talk I didn't about cry. it. I didn't no, cry. No, but you so that's needed good. to like let because I mean that is something you see in recovery a lot with people. It's yeah. like they let the external part of the world affect their well-being yeah and then like and that's that's what's been going on how recently. do you use the steps in your recovery to combat against that yeah i mean ultimately it hasn't filtered into how i treat people or how i treat myself um which is basically what i've learned in recovery um one of the biggest things is like my sponsor taught me is what is it happening to you or is it happening around you and the reality is it's happening around me nothing is happening to me like i said i'm fine my world is okay but i i on on a more worldly level yeah it it, it worries me and it freaks it freaks me out and uh i want things to be better and that's it that's all i got everybody Thanks for listening. Hopefully you got something out of that. If you'd like to uh, contact me, please do. David O with a whole bunch of numbers at Podcast Recovery on Twitter. <laughs> um, I don't know how to change my handle. You need to help me do that. I'll help you change your handle. <laughs> so it's actually like something, because I just said David O. I'm, it's I'm okay. A, I'm a social idiot. It's okay. I'm a functional moron. I'm basically a Canadian. Well, David, <laughs> again... From the bottom of our hearts. No, don't say it. Everybody out there, stay safe, stay clean. Thanks for sharing. <laughs>